Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a great day today. Today I have uh, an exciting message to bring to you all uh, in the book of Thessalonians concerning the departure of the Bride of Christ. And it's a very fascinating book to read, the book of Thessalonians, and it's misunderstood by many, especially certain passages in it. So I'm going to be reading from, uh, starting from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 today uh, through chapter 5, verse 11, and then I'm going to read a few verses in chapter 2 of uh, 2 Thessalonians as well. Uh, first off, I wanted to say that uh, in 2 Thessalonians, Paul was trying to correct an error that uh, was being spread around. Uh, teachings were going around that they were already in the day of the Lord, you know, the tribulation period, and he was letting them know that, that that's not true, and he told them what has to happen before then. So, and as we will see, it's, uh, it's the departure of the bride of Christ, and not the falling away as some believe. You know, the King James Version is in an error in translating it as falling away, because it was originally translated as departure, as we will see. Uh, so now I want to uh, start again from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light, and children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet so of the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or asleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Uh, verse 16 and 17 here are describing the rapture. And uh, verse 18, it says to comfort one another with the blessed hope of the rapture. And in uh, chapter 5 here, starting in verse 2, the day of the Lord is a term used for the tribulation period. And uh, it comes as a thief in the night. And the tribulation not only comes as a surprise to the unbelievers and the world as a whole, but it also comes as a thief to the sleeping church, because they are not watching for the Lord to return. And those who believe in a post-trib rapture, you can know when the time of that is, because once the covenant with, of Daniel 9, 27 is confirmed, there are two periods of 1260 days, and then the Lord comes. So, so you will know when he's going to come, whereas in the rapture, it is an imminent event. You do not know when he will come. And Revelation 3.3 3 says, If you do not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, meaning the sleeping church will be left behind to go through the tribulation. But to those who are faithful in watching and waiting for the Lord, Revelation 3.10 says that he will keep us from, out of, the hour of trial, out of the tribulation period to come upon all the earth. Verse 3, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. In other words, a tribulation will come upon those who are saying peace and safety, not on the bride of Christ. Uh, verse 4, the tribulation will not come as a thief 
to Christ's bride because they will be caught up to be with him in the air. Verse 6, let us watch and be sober. Again, we are commanded to watch. Watch for the Lord's return. Jesus tells, a number, tells us a number of times in the scripture to watch. Verse 9, God has not appointed us unto wrath. And some say, well, the tribulation is not the wrath of God. The wrath happens at the end. Not so. Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 14 and 15 says that the day of the Lord, again, the tribulation period, the day of the Lord is a day of wrath. So this scripture right here proves that there is a pre-tribulation rapture. We are not appointed to wrath, and the tribulation period is a day of wrath. I don't know how much clearer it can get there. Uh, verse 11. Or excuse me, uh, let me back up a minute. Verses 10 and 11 refer back to chapter 4, 16 and 17, where it talks about the rapture. And so what, it, what verses 9 through 11 are saying is that believers are not appointed unto the day of the Lord, again, because they will be raptured. And this is the faithful believers, not the sleeping church. The lukewarm will be left behind. Verse 11, again, we are told to comfort one another. Comfort each other in the fact that the rapture occurs before the day of the Lord begins. Now I want to look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye not be soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there shall come a falling away first. And the man of sin shall be revealed the son of perdition. This passage, uh, again, is greatly misunderstood by many because, there, again, there is a translation error here, as, as you will soon see. Uh, and in, that in chapter 3, where it says falling away, again, it was originally translated as departure, and some translations had departing. And there's a different meaning in, the, in these words. Uh, verse 1, our gathering together is the rapture. And keep in mind that Paul had already taught the rapture in 1 Thessalonians. So he was just trying to confirm to them that the rapture happens before these other events take place, mainly before the day of the Lord and before the man of sin is revealed. Verse 2. Do not be deceived by those saying that the day of the Lord has begun. Again, the rapture must come before the day of the Lord begins. That day shall not come, verse 3, unless the falling away or the departure, if you will, takes place. And then the son of perdition is revealed. And again, falling away is not the original translation. The King James changed it for some reason, and also the, the, the new modern King James doesn't have the books of the Apocrypha anymore that were included in the 1611 King James, so that there's much error in different translations today, and even the King James has some errors in it as well. Um, and again, it was worded as departure or departing. And uh, the World English Bible actually says departure for verse 3. Uh, and there's a Greek scholar by the name of Kenneth Wiest, and uh, he, he has a translation based on the original Greek, you know, which is as is, is close as you can get to the, the original translation. And it says departure of the church. And I want to read what to you what he says in his translation for verse 3, and then I'm going to take a look at Vine's dictionary for the word depart. Do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way, because that day shall not come except the aforementioned departure of the church to heaven comes first, 
and the man of lawlessness is disclosed in his true identity. And now the uh, part of the definition for depart in uh, Vine's dictionary. In its later use, it implied a going without noise or notice or by stealth. It sounds like the rapture to me. Um, also, um, falling away comes from a Greek word, apostasia. And the root word, apo, has a core meaning of away from or departure. Now, physical departure implies rapture. Uh, I'm going to read some, some, just a brief summary from, uh, I read an article by Thomas Ice. You can look it up on raptureready.com. Uh, the article is dealing with the rapture in 2 Thessalonians, uh, chapter 2, verse 3. Uh, again, I'm just going to touch briefly on it here. Uh, the Liddell and Scott Greek lexicon defines apostasia as defecting, revolt, departure, and disappearance. And it depends on how this word is used. And in, in other cases in the Bible, it is used to de describe like a defecting from the faith. But in this case, it is referring to the departure of believers from the earth. The first seven English translations of apostasia used either the, the word departure or departing. The translations are Wycliffe Bible in 1384 and the Tyndale Bible in 1526, the Coverdale Bible in 1535, the Cramer Bible in 1539, Breacher's Bible in 1576, the Basel Bible in 1583, and the Geneva Bible in 1608. And again, all of these were written before the King James Version. Uh, the, the departure here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 refers to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. Again, Paul was reassuring them that the rapture would happen before the day the Lord begins. You have to take these two epistles together. It's, 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 it's really all comprehensive, and he's dealing with the same subject. And again, the main reason he wrote 2 Thessalonians was because the errors had already begun in the church. And they were saying that the tribulation had begun. Uh, and if one says that apostasia means defection or falling away from the faith, that was already happening in Paul's day. And no doubt it's worse today, but it had already begun in his day. And, uh, and he's talking about a future event, not, not if he was talking about what was going on in his day, he wouldn't have termed it in, in future terms. It would, it would have been a present day thing. Uh, so this, the first, this um, future departure he is describing, again, is an event that hasn't happened yet. And the rapture of the bride of Christ fits this perfectly. And also in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, he never mentions apostasy at all. So, again, you're not, he's not talking about the defection of the faith. He's just reassuring them that the rapture will happen before the day of the Lord begins. So I hope this message has blessed you guys and encouraged you some. And uh, like I said, you can do some research on this yourself. Uh, as you can clearly see, if you, you, you look at this, you can find it very easily, these different translations that, that were before the King James. And there's a total different meaning be between the words falling away and departure or departing. We don't know when the Lord is going to come for his bride, but one day he will. And it will be before the Son of Man is revealed in his true identity and before the tribulation begins. So God bless you guys. Until next time, keep looking up.